Hey everyone, welcome back! This is a fun little build for Nidus that my stream chat originally proposed to me. You know what? I'm pretty sure someone out there has already covered this. In fact, a larger creator probably has done so. But I'm traveling, and this is part of my backlog while I'm gone of shower thoughts I found interesting. It's a very simple Nidus build, focused around Larva Burst, an ability augment that blows up anything pulled into his Larva Ball. The only issue with it is armor scaling, and that is where Veil Breaker comes in. When Stanax first released, he came with the Thero Strike helmet. Unlike other helmets, this one removes both armor and shields at the same time, and is also a permanent strip. It's also cheap to cast, so if you only need a small area stripped, then this is literally the best ability you can use. For cases where you ball enemies up with grouping like Larva, or just need to strip a Demolist, this is where other armor strips besides Terrify shines, because Terrify is not a permanent armor strip. It is duration based, and is extremely expensive to cast, as well as forcing enemies to run away if you aren't using a mod slot for the augment. Basically, it takes a lot more investment to run Terrify, and generally, I only use it on builds that have wide AoE nuking potential. You might also be wondering, why do we use the Larva Burst augment if Virulence already scales? Well, Virulence seems to cap at about 300 to 600k raw damage, usually on a full strip set up with 100 stacks. If you for some reason want to run this setup to level 9999, then the Force Toxin dot from Larva Burst may be to your advantage. Or just cast Virulence twice. Up to you. But at low stacks, this means you can blow stuff up on Steel Path even without having to build up your mutations. The Toxin Damage and Dawn also bypasses shields, meaning for Corpus, Larva Burst can instantly blow them up. Virulence is 100% puncture scaling, and has to eat through shields first. Thero Strike isn't really needed for Corpus in that case, but Thero Strike is also handy, because it completely strips all armor and shields from Acolytes instantly. Larva Burst can't tag them well, but you know what does shred Acolytes well? Virulence. So there still is a use for Thero Strike on Nidus, regardless of which ability you intend to DPS with. Let's look at that Nidus build. The first thing you may notice are a lack of survivability mods. I personally play Nidus based purely off of his health gate from mutation stacks and undying to spam his crowd control. Otherwise, you could drop Blind Rage for Umbral Vitality, and since your efficiency drain is no longer trash, you can now slot Adaptation over Fleeting Expertise. Negative efficiency Nidus is honestly fine because it also means his run, his one regenerates more, but because we're adding Thero Strike into the rotation, I would prefer not to. Strength is just as high as I can reasonably get it for maximum damage scaling on Larva Burst. Range both affects the pull of Larva and the AoE of the Burst itself, which has fall off, but that is mostly relevant since Larva pulls everything to the center. Rolling Guard to get rid of pesky status effects, and you might be wondering why I prompt your footed here. This is honestly just for Acolytes, aka Violence, or you just forget to have your 3 up, as I know your 3 gives you status immunity, but all it takes is getting slapped without it up once, and then proccing on dying for you to realize there isn't really much else worth slotting on Nidus here. For the original build, I didn't max rank fleeting because I didn't want to dumpster duration all the way, as we still need 33% to make sure that Larva actually pulls enemies in, instead of disappearing immediately. This also gets around the casting bug where Larva tries to pull something that's stuck on the wall. In those rare cases, Larva will not disappear until you either kill that enemy, or the ability expires, hence lower duration avoiding that bug. On a grouping build, it is easy to proc crits with a primer like Epitaph or Kuva Nucor. This lets you run Arcane Velocity, even with Nucor's 2% crit per shot, to push even more fire rate and make priming comfier. Molt Augmented is just a raw plus 60% strength when capped for more scaling, and that's pretty much it to this Nidus build. It's very simple. You just find enemies, larva them, violence the build stacks as needed, and when you want to kill, cast Thero Strike on the ball, uncast larva to proc the Augment Explosion, which conveniently also costs zero energy. Or I guess you can cast Violence on them for more stacks. Just remember, Larva Burst cleans up Corpus more easily due to the pure Toxin damage and Force Dawn. User 3 is needed to keep it up at all times for status immunity and 90% damage reduction. Stack this with Adaptation should make you basically invincible at base steel path if you're going the double Umbral route instead of just relying on the Undying passive. And remember, Thero Strike heals you, which makes up for losing his 4. I would still recommend to bring a weapon to kill Acolytes with in case you are low on mutation stacks, which will make Violence unable to do significant damage to them. Otherwise, since Acolytes don't start spawning in until roughly 4 minutes, you should be able to get a rather high amount of mutation stacks to buff Violence scaling. 
four hour larva ball primer, I did say you could bring Epitaph or a beam chainer like Kuva Nucor. And the only things that matter here are viral procs and I guess crowd control elements like radiation if you need to spray shots around. Augur mods don't really matter because one, we kill them instantly so status duration doesn't help, and two, Nidus has no shields and thus does not benefit from the Augur set bonus. I still would recommend Xenoric for Wellspring on this particular setup since our DPS primeline revolves around armor stripping enemies to guarantee they die. Wellspring regenerates 5 energy per second, and our main source of crowd control, Larva, also requires energy to cast. Therefore, you're kind of a sitting duck otherwise. You could still take the other schools, but make sure to keep energy pads on your gear wheel, since it really sucks to proc on dying on Nidus just because you couldn't cast Larva. This is less of an issue for the Double Umbral Adaptation variant, so feel free to use what you want here. Alternatively, you could try to find a way to fit his Teeming Violence Augment for as one. I did bring my Exodia Contagion Zaw, which is a Muon, Sikala, Varji, Tujai, Polearm, and Staves, Daggers, and Polearms are the fastest and cleaning the swinging Zaw type, so if you want to throw your Exodia Contagions as fast as possible, these are the choices to go with. Contagion usually aims to kill with a single hit, so we go all in on crit and ignore status for the parts. That's also why the Zaw is built full corrosive. This ribbon can be replaced with Prime Fury to keep the highest attack speed and ensure you can throw as many Contagions as possible. Contagion should be cheap because we just had it in Abaris on Deimos. You only need a rank 0 because the passive from higher ranks only kick in when throwing beyond 30 meters from your target, which isn't how we usually play Nidus regardless. You could use a 30 meter passive for Acolytes, but violence on Nidus is more than enough with the armor strip to rip them apart. Basic pans are built to keep the theme of Undying, but really it doesn't really bring anything to the table outside of Primed Animal Instinct, Vacuum, and I guess Panzer Devolution to keep itself alive since that doesn't affect Epitaph, and no shields means you will rarely ever be at full HP, meaning Synth Fiber's main effect isn't needed to regenerate more energy, though it can help to keep your Panzer alive a bit longer before it goes on cooldown from dying. A viral Quills isn't needed because of grouping primers, and basically this is probably the most useless companion setup I've had to date, as you could use anything with Vacuum and Radar, and it would be identical on this loadout besides the Infinite Cat revives. Hopefully you enjoyed this video while I'm traveling. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible like I've done with the Veilbreaker update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.